the nurse put him on my chest. And what I remember really vividly is the nurse saying, don't worry about what you just saw. And I was just like, what, what did I just see? The first thought I, I had as a mom was, what did I do wrong? What's my body do? Ciao, ciao, and welcome to Creative Chronicles, a new video cast brought to you by Jess Brain that takes you into the minds of those that color outside the lines. For our pilot episode today, you're going to get motherhood mantras for how to maintain your sane in the face of complexity and cuteness. Elysian McNiff Kogelmeyer was born in Gloucester, Massachusetts. Growing up with a father as an art therapist and a mother who dedicated her career to art education, Elysian has always been passionate about the creative process and the importance of empowering artists and cultural institutions. A joyful ginger from the get-go, she received her BA in History from Middlebury College and her MA in Public Humanities from Brown University. Elysian is also on the board for National Organization of Arts and Health and a member of Children's Hospital Colorado's Art Selection Committee. In 2013, a move out west brought her to an online educational startup in Denver. That's where our paths first crossed. We, yeah. we barely worked together, really, at, at that company. Hardly worked together, hardly had any real interactions. And then, in 2018, mm -hmm. I remember scrolling on Instagram and you popped up with your amazing son, Odin. And I feel like I have not stopped looking away from you guys ever since. And I would love to hear you talk about the day that Odin was born. So let's go back in time to August 29th, 2018. What is fascinating about the, the birth story with Odin is leading up to it. I had just like a textbook easy pregnancy. Whenever I'd go in for a checkup, I got the all clear, everything was going well. And it wasn't until Odin was born and he came out. Uh, the nurse put him on my chest. I hadn't really fully seen him yet. And what I remember really vividly is the nurse saying, don't worry about what you just saw. And I was just like, what, what, did, I, what did I just see? All babies look different, but he looked very different. The nurses and the doctors whisked him away. And if you've ever seen the movie Wonder, like it was very much like that moment that Julia Roberts had in which, you know, baby gets taken away and uh, the nurse brought him back after they checked him out. She told me that, you know, he most likely had teacher Collins syndrome. And after giving birth, I remember just being like, teacher what? <laughs> like, had no concept and like. She handed me over a bunch of printouts. <laughs> In like the Mayo Clinic, maybe, and you know, the internet uh, describing what Treacher Collins syndrome was. It's a genetic mutation in which there is a stop in the facial development when the baby is in utero. And if you like remember high school, um, you know, biology, yeah. it's an insertion and it creates a stop. And so things stop developing. So depending on when the mm -hmm. insertion happens in the chromosomal map, some people could have Treacher Collins and not even know it because it happened so later on. Whereas with Odin, it happened pretty early. So he was born without any ear canals or fully formed outer ears, which is called microtia and atresia in medical terms. He was born with a very undersized and recessed jaw, which is what impacted his airway. And what we learned later was um, keeping him from breathing properly. Even though Odin was born, you know, into a room in an environment that was very on edge, we also still had like very sweet moments in the first I would call it like eight hours in which you know we were trying to bring him to my chest and it's hard for me to share this but in those moments when looking down his differences the first thought I, I had as a mom was what did I do wrong what's my body do to Odin to to lead to these these differences these complex craniofacial differences that he he had and it was such a weird strong intense emotion of blaming myself and my my body in that moment after giving birth to him and there were a lot of emotions you know going on Chandler and I were not quick to to take a photo and send it to family and not because we were ashamed of Odin we do have photos of him right after that the doula took um, and there are photos that I cherish, but we just, we needed time to, to wrap our minds around, you know, that this was not the, the birth story that we expected. It wasn't the, you know, the baby that we, that we expected. But I am proud to say that from the first second I did meet him, we held him with such love. We did, and we still do love him deeply. And 
I'm getting emotional just thinking about it, holding my little, my little sweet, sweet boy. But a, a few hours later, when we were moved into the postpartum room, after a few failed attempts to get him to feed, he had an episode in which he couldn't breathe. And so they rushed him to the NICU. We were there in the NICU for two and a half, three days. And then unfortunately, uh, Odin coded blue, which means, you know, that you have to rush in the emergency team. His sats went way low. He went purple in the face. Like code blue is like, you need to bring in. Were you there? Uh, yeah, I was holding him one time. It was really bad. You know, they push you out of the room. The whole medical team comes in. And then ours was extra, extra heightened because um, the NICU nurse who was in the room with us, they have they wear their buttons, the code blue buttons around their neck. And hers wasn't working. I had to like run, you know, shuffle out because I had just given birth like a day ago out into the hallway and yell like, help, help, my baby's not breathing, code blue, code blue. And so that's when the team rushed in. They pushed us out of the room and we were just like, waiting in the hallway. And for those that are familiar with, um, you know, the, the sounds of a, of a pulse ox in the monitors, there's sounds that you don't want to hear. And it felt like hours in our brains of just in our bodies waiting for, um, you know, them to, to essentially like resuscitate. Um, and then they, they did. And then you hear the like beep, beep, beep of like good oxygen levels. And it was, a relief and he did that twice <laughs> and that was within the first week that was this that was on his second day of life okay. that's when they rushed him to children's hospital um so that he could get a trach okay because that boy needed some some breathing support art is a wound turned into light said george brock there's a lot of chatter among parents of medically complex kids there's a brutal reality that we were caught by surprise and mourned the healthy baby we expected to have we all hope for a happy and healthy baby when starting and growing families. It's shocking when it's not a given. Sure, I could get depressed about how my life is different from what I expected. But as artists, we know that we cannot expect or predetermine. We have to let ourselves go to the creative process. We have to trust the process. Odin is my light. He's my work of art. I wouldn't change a thing. Some of your writings that I've read, you know, you're really open about how you you still find yourself mm -hmm. adjusting to expectations and yeah. and giving yourself grace and allowing yourself different versions of, of motherhood with, with Odin. How did you have to sort of adjust your expectations on what those early months of motherhood were going to be like? Holy moly. Expectations, like I had so many of them, like thanks Instagram too. like. You know, when I was pregnant, think you know, planning out the outfit that Odin would wear when coming home yeah. and the outfit I would wear so we could have the yeah. photo in front of the house or leaving the hospital, like on day three, not on day like 76 or whatever it was that we, we left. But also like on the flip side, the day of going home for us was such a momentous occasion and something that we look forward to for like almost three months. And the staff made it so beautiful and yeah. so like, Everyone signs a book and comes oh. out and says goodbye. It was a little bittersweet because we got so close with the, the nurses and the, the staff and we had so much support while there. Whereas going home, you know, we were off to do it by ourselves. Yeah. The equipment yeah. was different from the equipment we were used to in the hospital. But it was great because once we were home and like settled, yeah. we got to introduce, you know, Odin to oh. Juno. And then, like, not to get sappy, but for, like, the dog parents, like, for our dog, it was huge yeah. and momentous because she had been smelling Odin for right. three oh, months oh, and not I'm able... I'm not even a dog person. Yeah. Like, I'm a cat lady, and you got me teary on that one. And dogs are That's tuned sad. in. So, like, you know, I was pregnant, and she would, like, right, sleep on my right. belly. And then all of a sudden, baby was gone from my body, but right. it wasn't home. And you're not there. And like, where's baby? Yeah. The challenge is like, it's a logistics nightmare in which the hospital won't discharge you until like, it's proven that you're going to have support at home, like in-home nursing. But the in-home nursing can't really assign a nurse to your case until you have a discharge date. So a lot of families end up just like stuck, just waiting for, oh, for nursing until they can go home. Chandler and I made the decision finally to just go home without um, confirmed nursing support. I did find one nurse from the, the NICU. I did some like marketing and made little cute signs and put them down in the NICU to see if anyone would want to help out. We had one nurse named Harry L who um, came from the NICU and did one night a week because Odin needed 24-7 care. So someone was always awake with him nonstop. Yeah, 24-7 trained, alert, 
care. We, like a lot of families, just went home without nursing and built out a schedule for it to work for our family. And then luckily, uh, soon after we were discharged, we were given a nurse who I believe did um, three or four days. But night nursing was really hard to come by. And and so Chandler and I were, you know, like zombies in the first year. And we had to rely and lean on heavily our family. So while we were in the hospital, we flew out our family members or the grandparents to be trained so they could help us take care of Odin. And so um, grandparents did uh, night shifts so that, you know, chunks of the night from like 8.30 p.m. to 1.30 in the morning so that Chandler and I could sleep. And then, so I would go to bed and then I would wake up at 1.30 and be awake from 1.30 to 4.30 in the middle of the night. Called it like my Benjamin Franklin hours. (laughs) And then I would go back to bed and Chandler would wake up at 4.30 and that's when he would like start his day. And so he would be awake until the the nurse came at 7 a.m. Because Oda needed a lot in the middle of the night. It wasn't just watching and making sure it was safe. It was giving him feeds, giving him nebulizers and treatments in the middle of the night. So there was there was a lot to be done. We were busy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine. Expectations. I had a lot of them before Odin was born. And then I had to let them go. It wasn't easy. I'm stubborn. I've had a lifetime attaching myself to ideals, plans, expectations. But Odin is my mantra. Let go. And when I do, the unexpected is usually even better. When pregnant, I assumed our child would join the other peewees on the magic carpet. I thought of ski school, lost mittens, red-tinged noses kissed with snow. When Odin was born, we didn't even think a life in the mountains was feasible. How could a trick kid handle the severe, dry, cold altitude of the Colorado mountains? We had to be patient. It was worth the wait. This winter, he's thriving, and skiing looks a bit different. I've traded my downhill gear for a pastime imprinted in my childhood memories, returning to a sport where I chased my dad through the woods of Dogtown. Cross country is a family hobby now, and Odin loves it. The expectations I thought were lost didn't go anywhere. They just changed for the better. Let's talk a little bit about how you feel like you've been able to maintain the identity of Elysian <laughs> <laughs> throughout these first five years of, yeah. of motherhood. I think it's any mom can relate to feeling like they lose their sense of privacy or identity mm-hmm. or, um, you know, Netflix time. Um, you got dealt a very different set of cards that you had to quickly adjust to. Yeah. And from watching you over the years, I know that you partake in yoga. I know the outdoors are like a critical piece, mm-hmm. probably of mental health for you, your family, your mom, your sister, your work and art. What are some of those practices um, yeah. that help you maintain your sane? So I actually didn't lose Netflix time. I gained it because being awake from 1.30 to 4.30 in the morning, there's not much to do. Like, I don't really want to read a book. So I, I did a lot of like Netflix binging. And I, ironically enough, got really into Grey's Anatomy. I had not seen it oh before. God, that was what I got into mm-hmm. when I had Carmi. Yeah, interesting. Was- There's a Treacher Collins episode too, which oh I, gosh, which, which no. is great. I had plenty of Netflix time and was giving great customer support to our international clients because I was awake at two in the morning, three in the morning. So people who are in Singapore and Australia. Valuable. Yeah, asset to the team on that one. You, you found the hours within the new life to keep your identity yeah yeah and i would say that like with all parents like our identity shifts when we when we have kids and like what i learned pretty early on with odin is that like i had to be like my best self to take care of him chandler and i were very aware that we could not deplete ourselves because then if an emergency happened you know if he gets sick like we wouldn't be strong enough to take care of him so in a lot of ways he empowered us to find ways to take care of ourselves little things so like a great example like i was a yoga teacher before Owen was born i had a pretty steady yoga practice I started doing 10 minutes of yoga in the morning when I woke up with my coffee and 10 minutes sometimes can seem like you don't have it. Um, But I have a partner who's like very, you know, supportive and like if it's, you know, putting eyes on Odin so I can go into my, my lady cave, which is my office. Oh, I love that mm-hmm. term. I need to pick that mm-hmm. up from you too. Okay. Yeah, that's my that's lady my, cave. Mm-hmm, it's my like my space. That's good. Close the doors and just like breathe, figure out where I am for the day. You know, is my brain scattered? Am I able to like focus? And that just kind of like gives me a guiding light for the day. If I, in the middle of my work day, am needing like a break, I'll just like go sit outside and read a book and read like three or four pages because I love reading instead of like scrolling Instagram, which yeah. also is very 
enticing. And so just choosing those, finding those five or 10 minutes to get a couple pages out. Yeah. Helps yeah. you kind of reset. Reset. Yeah. To find the reset. Cause you know, like the days can just like batter you, whether you're a stay at home mom, a mom working from home, a mom, a mom working in the office. And so finding those moments and then also breaking out the chunks of time. So for me, movement is therapy. I also did therapy soon after Owen was born because needed it. But uh, you know, I've been an athlete my whole life. And so for me, movement, a runner, runner? A runner. Yeah, 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 soccer, running the early days of Odin, and even still it happens to me, endorphins run really high. And there's like a lot of like fight or flight moments um, that, you know, adrenaline that are that's going through coursing through the body taking care of him. And so running, getting on my Peloton bike, those moments to like sweat it out and let my body just kind of take over and focus on making my body ache rather than like my heart or my mind yeah. was is still helpful and so I make I make space for that and again my partner is really supportive in making sure I have time for it because if I don't then I get all this like stagnant energy and yeah. like I'm short-tempered cranky for um, a lot of families and people it's really hard to to find that time yeah. and so I'm very glad and lucky that Chandler and I have found ways to carve it out within our within our lives a work in progress. My advice to any person raising a child, medically complex or not, is that, similar to art, everything is a unique experience. Not only the creation of that artwork, but also the interpretation of it. It will be perceived from the outside, and there will be commentary, and that can lead to insecurities. It can also lead to growth and confidence. It's all about the type of support you seek and accept. Can you talk a little bit about the role that art plays in your and Odin's life? A huge piece. So art has, I, I joke that the creative process is just in my blood because I grew up with a father who is an art therapist, um, a painter, a mom who's an art educator, an artist herself. And so for me, I like making art like as a hobby um, and a thing to do. And I took art classes in college, but really what I love doing is working with artists and uh, being on the curatorial side. And I love talking um, and I love meeting people. So a lot of what I do and what I have done since graduating from college has been creating um, educational resources for artists and arts organizations to support artists in like the creative economy. I went to grad school for, for this work. When I came to Denver and when we met at Craftsy, I was making the online painting, drawing, and photography classes. And now I'm at a company called Artwork Archive, and we are an online art inventory system, management system for artists, collectors, individual collectors, and collecting institutions. So hospitals, public art programs, academic institutions, whoever has an art collection, and they need to organize it, manage it, and like share it out and market it out and make it accessible. They use our, our platform. Can you talk a little bit about the work that you do for children's? Because of my dad being an art therapist, and then because of the work I did within public art, and then with Odin being born with his medical complexities, and like having us be, you know, frequent flyers at the hospital, <laughs> arts and health became like very much something that I was like living and doing. Yeah. Now, I or for the past few years, I've been on the art selection committee for Children's Hospital Colorado. I sit with other family members, um, staff, doctors that um, help select the artworks that come into the hospital, the rotating exhibitions that we host. Excellent. And then last year, I joined the, the board for the National Organization of Arts and Health. Um, it's so incredible. I love it. Before Owen was born, you know, I had these grandiose plans of taking my baby to the art museum and walking around the murals of of the city for me like a big momentous occasion was being able to like take him out of the hospital room and it was like a big thing we had the respiratory therapist like we had to like do a just gear check room. just being out of the room once we were able to take him out of the room like I was doing that all the time. We were walking down the hallways. I was showing him, you know, like paintings of my favorite animals, paintings or photos of, you know, there's like this um, uh, incredible work on the second floor of a tall tree. It's a composite image that goes up to the, the ceiling pretty much and talking to Odin about like, you haven't been outside yet, but like outside there's like trees and blue skies. Yeah. We walked him through the the sculpture garden oh, yeah. um, oh. outside the hospital, uh, uh, and so yeah, so the, those were special. Yeah. But just being able to like walk him um, by, you know, the the artwork and talk about it was, and to have something to talk about that was right. for me normal, and that wasn't just um, you know talking to doctors about his vitals and. Mm -hmm. 
Acceptance is hard. But how quickly he changed my perspective. Ever since Odin gifted the world with his unique self, I have rediscovered how good and kind people can be. Odin is met and held with love by family, friends, and even those who meet him briefly. My heart bursts whenever I hear our neighbor's children yelling, Hey, baby Odin! from across the street, eager to come over and play. Or one of my favorites. I know he has facial differences, but man, is he cute! Facial differences does not mean ugly. It's just another way for an extraordinary person to express themselves. It's another way the universe teaches us that difference is who we are. It's our special power. I know the world is not always kind, and our kids or adults without facial differences are bullied. I worry about the days when Odin will be challenged because of the way he looks. No parent wants their child to feel anything less than perfect. Every day I plant tiny seeds of courage, humor, confidence, and love in my growing boy with the hope that he'll have a forest of strength within him. Luckily, he is protected on the outside by so many devoted champions, but the most important thing is for him to be his own champion. That is my hope for my son, that he knows his worth and that he plants tiny seeds of love, hope, courage, strength, and humor in our world. If you could go back and whisper something to that new mom, Elise, like what would you tell her? Like we had no fucking clue what the future was going to hold with Odin. Like, am I going to be able to work again? What's it going to be like if he goes to school? Is he going to be bullied for his facial differences? To even just like, what appointment do I have next week? There's just like so many things to like worry about in the future for Odin's like health and his like safety, but also just like his like mental and emotional well-being. You know, as parents, like we shepherd that and nurture our kids. If I could go back in time and talk to myself, I'd be like, don't worry, like he's thriving, he's happy. Life with Odin is like absolutely perfect and like better than like speaking of expectations. Like Chandler and I are so much our better selves and a better family unit because of the differences that he has brought into our our lives. And like we just had his birthday party and you know, so many kids and friends that we knew before he was born that we have made since and he laughs and like runs hard and has mm-hmm. great friends and like such a joy of life he's happy he's healthy we're happy we got it and then like hopefully i can keep telling myself that in like five years you know ten yeah. years because like yeah. that always is a thing about thinking into the future and just wanting to ensure that the world will be kind to odin and so like Instagram is wonderful, but I've also had trolls say some really awful things to me, like slide into my DMs, or we hear things out in public. And what um, Chandler and I try to do our best at is just make sure that like Odin knows who he is. We can't stop how other people interact with Odin, but we can teach Odin how to interact with others. And so, you know, nurturing his confidence and sense of self and to know that he's like loved, not just by mom and dad, but by like family and friends. And so that when kids bully or say things that are unkind or he gets stares that he can understand that that doesn't like identify him ever since odin like essentially like came out of the stroller and was able to like walk around he's been getting stares because like actually thinking back on it like when he was like in the stroller people couldn't really see him and so we didn't really have to deal with the stares but you know now with odin being you know out and about he gets stares um sometimes kids um aren't always the kindest or What I have learned is that when kids use words like scary or um, weird or whatnot is because they don't have the vocabulary to say like, I'm surprised or different. Different. And so in the moment, not to take it, you know, uh, so close to, to heart and instead just like reframe and tell the kiddos like, oh, we don't use the word like, you know, um, weird. You know, he's just different. Like we're all different. We have different hair color, eye color. But what's been really amazing to watch to like go back to that time of like me worried about odin being bullied or like the world being unkind to odin because i was really worried about it i am still worried about it when people are unkind when kids are unkind to odin um and he now notices it he a tells me which is great he doesn't you know hold it inside but also when he you know he says like i didn't like what that boy said about me he'll then say like 
you know, my friends, Maggie and Lily don't say that about me. Or, you know, um, next time when we go to the playground, can we go play with Lucy? He, He then like leans on his friends. He knows that what could like be a moment to like really break him or become part of his identity he knows yeah. it's like out of the ordinary i keep seeing this quote around that says something like our our motherhood the way we mother will outlive us and live mm. within inside our children forever mm. and you were like honestly like the first person that came to mind when i when i saw that quote because when you talk about self-love when you talk about mm. compassion and kindness for others yeah dedication to Odin's life now and in the future, dedication to your partnership with Chandler. Those are all things, of course, right, that, like, you know Odin will carry forever. But what you might not know is that, like, other children are going to carry those because of you, too, because you've, you've, you've shared your journey with moms like me. And then we've tried to internalize those and take them to our children to try to make it a better world for them, but for Odin, too. And so I thank you, really, for, like, sharing so much so much of your vulnerability and so much of odin's life really and allowing us to you know to help us see things differently give us different words and language and um i just i i really have drawn like so much admiration from the way that you've mothered odin and you've demystified Mm. a lot of potentially scary moments in motherhood and and you've demystified a lot of conversations um and themes you know that I don't know I would have been exposed to had it not been for you. And so that's really important. I hope you really, I really hope you keep sharing. What I have noticed and heard is that um, by me sharing out Odin, our experiences, that a lot of, whether it's close friends I went to college with or people who just found me through a handle, learn about differences, can talk about it with their kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, My hope is that there's a lot more understanding um, for someone like Odin so that when he does go out into that world, people are comfortable with differences and talking about it. Why does it look like you have so much fun dressing up? Ah! You know, like- well, the funny thing about Odin's uh, fashion, going back in time, he was naked for like in a diaper for like a very long time in the NICU. First clothes he put on, I didn't pick out. It was actually, and we came in in the morning and he was wearing a onesie with monkeys on it, which was also really special. The nurses didn't know that that's uh, my husband's favorite animal Aww. is a monkey. And I remember it was like, such a moment of being like oh right like he's not like a medical like thing like he is a baby and logistically i like was able to see how they you know got the wires like through (laughs) through the onesie and so it was just like a weird aha moment walking in and being like oh right he can wear clothes like Mm -hmm. yes it's funny because i don't love like dressing myself like but i found a lot of joy dressing Odin. And it's even funnier because when I found out I was having a boy, I was a little disappointed because in my mind, I didn't like the thought of boy clothes and I was gravitating more towards girl clothes. And then I realized that there's like a lot of like wonderful, like gender neutral, fun, colorful patterns. patterns. And so like, I don't know, call it retail therapy, but like one of the things is helpful and fun is like dressing Odin and Odin gets a lot of stares um you know from day one people like look at him they ca- he catches people's eye because he looks different and so like if he's going to catch people's stares I'm like, why don't you look good buddy you know he's five now and so he's just becoming aware of like the stares and the comments and what people are saying like since I have been hearing it and super hyper tuned like my mom right, ears are like enough. across yeah. the playground I'm like sure. what did you say <laughs> 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 Uh, there's just like always like an underlying stress that he is going to experience that like out on his own by himself and as hard as it is for me like it's himself that is going to have to deal with it and he the comments are going to be about him the stares are going to be about him a lot of what I hear from like older folks with Treacher Collins is there's bullies everywhere. Everyone gets bullied for something. Could be the color of your backpack, right. you know, your your height, your body composition, your glasses, whatever it is. Odin's gonna have his own flavor of that. And that my hope is that he doesn't take it personally and like he knows his value and sense of self and that he can hopefully like shake it off. Empathy. How a near two year old can have more than some grown ups in this world astounds me. May Odin never lose that pull to others in their most vulnerable moments. Pictured here, Odin about to kiss Juno because she is scared by the mountain storm. He didn't leave her side during the thunder. He sat between her and the elements outside. He is mighty, despite being mini. Every day is a tiny homage to motherhood. 
because every day Odin gives me a little piece of himself for me to cherish. His smile, a hug, new word, a fantastic imaginative story, an elaborate artwork. My love, my little, my light. And with that parting sentiment, I want to send a giant hug and thank you to Elysian for being so welcoming when I invited myself to sit in her home and hoard her motherhood wisdom. I'm quite certain the last 30 minutes is just a slim glimpse into her always insightful, artistic, and giving world. And I thank you, friend, so much for giving us all that gift. Please show your appreciation and love to her, Odin, and Chandler in the comments and subscribe for the next episode of Creative Chronicles starring filmmaker and part-time funny man and Woody motherfucking Roseland. Hi, Odin. Hello, Odin. This is mom's voice. Hello. <gasps> Hello. Hi. Hey, buddy.